Welcome to the age of the great guilds. the dawn of your 17th year. The elders await you in the sanctuary. I've never known them to weave such a bright messenger nymph. I wonder why the elders want to see me. I'd better get down to the village. The last leaf of There's the long tapestry. I don't remember it looking so old and frayed. The threads describe the creation of the world and the passing of the two shadows. Here's more of the tapestry. The pattern shows the entire history of the weavers, back to the founding of the great guilds. The last section tells about the decline of the guilds. There's a third shadow gathering. That's strange. The end is completely torn off. There's Hetchel. And the elders don't look at all pleased with her. You have heard the findings of this council, Dame Hetchel? Have you anything to say in your own defense? My elders, my actions speak for themselves. This reckless defiance is intolerable. Any secret you share with Signa's son might be turned against us. His talent is awakening, and the power is very strong in him. We dare not desert him now. A stubborn old fool, who are you to decide such things? Enough, Lachesis. Hetrell. I am grieved to see your many years of service end in such disgrace. My destiny is yours to weave. Hetchel, the fabric of your life has been woven by your own choices. Gaze once more upon the great loom, if you would know your ultimate destiny. For that destiny is now upon you.
A swan's egg. What does it mean? Something is deeply wrong. That draft has never failed before. What is that noise? Outside! The guild is under attack! Who dares to desecrate the great loom of the weavers? This is the work of that demon boy! We should kill him while we still can! Your name will be cursed forever! Son of Signa! Loom child! Bobbin Thread! My name? But I had nothing to do with this! Wait! Where are you going? No explanations, no goodbyes, and once again I'm left behind. It's heavier than it looks. Those are the same four threads spun by the elders. They're still echoing in the loom. Egg, it's trying to open. Uh, ooh, there's my boy. What's happening? The whole village has flown away without us. From the moment you came into this world, Bobbin. Great and terrible things have been happening. The Elders hoped that your birth was the cause of it. Why would the Elders want to get rid of me? I'm such an awful weaver that they never even let me study with the others. They fear you, Bobbin. When the Swan arrived, they were already trying to weave the same draft on you that they had worked on me. But the draft turned against them. It means only one thing that the pattern is failing of its own accord. No! Can't it be stopped? Stop chaos? The only thing to do is embrace it and turn ourselves into creatures of shadow or plan our escape. Escape? To where? I don't know. But if we are to survive, we must find out where that flock has flown and join them if we can. You've already found Atropos's distaff. Good. You won't be able to weave very much with it at first, but as you practice, its true power will be revealed to you. It's time to leave this island, Loom Child. Your destiny lies beyond the sunset, across the sea. Mother Hetchel, where are you going? Goodbye, Bobbin. I must follow the swans. Well, this is a fine mess. Everybody's gone and I still don't understand what's going on. Why did they keep calling me Loom Child? Nobody's ever let me anywhere near a loom.
Ouch. Destiny shall draw the lightning down from heaven, roll its thunder far across the sea, to where I wait upon the shore of wonder, on the day the sky is opened and the tree is split asunder. The day the sky is opened. There's an owl in there. Another owl. Didn't know there were so many owls in these woods. All the holes are full now. It might help to point at something first. Wonderful. I can't see a thing. Still dripping, what a mess. Grass green, I hate that colour. I don't think I spun that right.
The colour changed. Green again. Is it over? I think that's close enough.
Cocos. Well, well, well. Looks like a scrawny runt trying to sneak into our flocks. Sneak? You call that sneaking? I heard them coming all the way in from town. Thought you were going to fleece some shepherds, did you? Maybe we ought to take the shears to you instead. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, I'm not looking for sheep or trouble. I'm looking for a flock of swans. Swans? Swans. You know, birds. Oh, swans, of course. We should have known. Everybody comes here when they want swans. <laughs> <laughs> next, next you'll be telling us you're some sort of wizard off to fly away with them birds. <laughs> right. <laughs> A wizard? Wizard? You wouldn't happen to be the great wizard that Fleece was telling us about, would you now? Fleece? He is sort of dressed like a wizard. I don't know. He doesn't look very powerful to me. Me neither. I say we don't let him by until we know for sure. Come on then, wizard. Let's see some magic. Uh, or else. Uh, Going somewhere, little wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I was better off with the elders back home. Come on, lads. He's had enough. Let him go. Some kind of wizard, eh? Don't trip on your robe, little wizard. Get on, you lazy bunch of yous. Back to work. What's going on up there? Near this spot, Loose and Bottleblow, founder of the noble guild of glassmakers, attained his final clarity. Welcome to Crystal Guard, stranger! I'm Master Goodmode, 31st in the Noble Guild of Glassmakers. And who might you be? My name is Bobbin. Bobbin Threadbear of the, um, Noble Guild of Weavers. A weaver! Tell me, is it true that to peer beneath a weaver's hood brings instant agonizing death? I honestly don't know. Nobody's ever tried it with me. You have such a wonderful view of the sky here. Have you noticed a flock of swans flying this way? Swans? Swans. You know, birds. Yes, yes, swans! <laughs> no, I haven't heard of any swan sightings. Look around to your heart's content, weaver threadbare. And remember, if you break it, you buy it. <laughs> Soft Shard, wife of Lucent Bottle Blow, here attained final clarity. Out. 
Not so fast here. Who's that? I can barely hear what they're saying. I trust your excellency is pleased with our progress? That all depends on how far this sphere can help me see. Four hours, most assuredly. Uh, perhaps six with a bit of luck? Only six hours? But I expressly requested eight. Every sphere is unique, Bishop. It is impossible to accurately predict how well this sphere will perform. I need at least eight hours. Eight hours, Master Crucible. See to it. Huh. A glass bell. I wonder what will happen if... I'm dizzy. Our esteemed Bishop Mandible cuts quite a figure, doesn't he? I don't doubt the Crucible is getting tired of bowing and scraping. Why would the clerics want a scrying sphere anyway? I thought they didn't believe... side is even sharper than a weaver's spindle. That side is even sharper than a weaver's spindle. But Crucible appears to think that they're up to no good again. Then why would he do business with them at all? Let alone sell them a sphere. Well, you know, Crucible, he'd sell his own mother's spectacles if he thought there was a profit in it. And the clerics are paying off in cash. Which should keep us in the clear for years to come. Still, I'm certainly pleased that Crucible's not taking any chances. This scythe might become very useful if our friend the bishop has been less than transparent with us. Ouch! Yes. Very useful indeed.
He's back! <laughs> so are we. It might help to point at something first. Well, that worked. Funny, I don't feel very scary. Get away from here! Now I've got to go and round them all up again. And you'd better not be here when I get back. Go on now! Hello there. Who said that? I did. My name is Fleece, first chosen of the Guild of Shepherds. I wish we had time to chat a while and trade some tales, but we have got a serious problem on our hands. What sort of trouble are you having? It seems we have a dragon nearby who has an enormous appetite for fresh mutton. We breed our sheep for extra whiteness, so we cannot keep them on the meadows. She can spot them miles away. By now, the dragon has carried off so many that we may not be able to fill the cleric's order. The clerics? I just saw the bishop at the glassmaker's. Bishop Mandible? He placed the order for 10,000 sheep. 10,000 sheep? That's enough to feed an army. Yes, that had occurred to us too. You noticed our increased patrol in the forest. We'll deliver the sheep to the clerics if we can, but we won't trust them. I suppose fighting the dragon will be out of the question. Only a mage can save us. I see you've noticed my little friend. She doesn't look at all well. She isn't, and my songs of healing don't seem to be bringing her much comfort. I wish I were better with him. The flock is out to pasture. You'll find them there. Go forth, wizard, and may you return safely to our fold. Well, what have we here? Oh, that's what comes of being in such a blazing hurry, I guess. I thought you looked a bit scrawny. Oh, why, you'd hardly make a decent kindling.
the way you found it. Now. Sheep. Gold. Sheep. Eek! Fire! You haven't heard the last of me, you cheeky brat! It might help to point at something first. Guess I won't be going back that way. My own reflection.
Bishop Mandible. What in the world is he up to? These grave markers are forged from solid bronze. Oh, hello there. What's that? Your music woke me up. Oh. Sorry. Oh, not to worry. I'm Rusty. Rusty Nailbender. I'm Bobbin Threadbare, of the Weavers. Weavers, eh? Our folk are blacksmiths. I'm supposed to be getting firewood for the master. But this plateau is being picked cleaner than a new blade. Come over here. That's us down there. The forge. That's what we call it. I've heard you weavers don't get out much. What's your business here? I've been looking for a flock of swans. Swans? No. No swans around here. Oh. Say, all this talk has made me sleepy. A real pleasure, though. Oh, let me know if you find your swans. Oh. Hello, young nail bender. About time you were coming home. Stoke's been looking for you, and he ain't real happy. You better get in there right now.
Well, it's about time, you lazy idiot. I sent you out four hours ago for firewood, and you bring me back one scrawny stick. If your father weren't a foreman, I'd toss you in the furnace. You're just lucky you's downstairs with the bishop right now. If that fire goes out and the cleric's swords don't get done... I'm sorry, I had a bit of trouble. Perhaps you'd like to offer your confessions to the bishop in person. I'd be happy to arrange it. Now give me that stick! I'm done dealing with the likes of you, Nailbender. I'll be back. And you'd better hope the furnace doesn't go out. What a mess. I can't do anything without my distaff. That straw looks awfully comfortable, though. <gasps> oh, I must have a sleep draft woven into it. Imagine frightening a poor defenceless old thing like me, Cor. Well, I may not be much good with fire, love, but I still enjoy the taste of tender, firm young meat. One blasted stick of wood left, curse that lad. Ten thousand swords to forge, and the furnace is about as cold as my chances for promotion. I don't believe this. Real nice of that weaver kid. Just wait until his turn comes. I'll be waiting for him on the outside. Oh dear, that means trouble. If Elder Atropos saw his staff treated so, he'd have something to say about it. You, you could be sure of that. Careful now, old bird. Let's not singe the feathers. The final blade is even now in the hands of our most skilled blade shaper, Your Excellency. How's it coming there, Edgewise? I'm just putting the edge on the last sword, sir. Good to hear it! No slacking off now! Let's get it finished! You'll share with me a historic moment, Foreman. The forging of the Ten Thousandth Sword marks the end of our preparations. How much longer must I wait? The steel will ring out its final defeat, sir. Not much longer now. Very good, then. Carry on! What evil is this? A witch's curse has twisted the final blade. A curse, Edgewise? I think not. It would take more than a mere witch's curse to ruin my plans. You there! Could it be that this little prank is of your doing? Yes? Well then, I would be honored to have you as my guest at the cathedral. I know some other curses that may amuse you. Oh. 
I'm getting really tired of this. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Bishop Mandible, trans-ultimate apostle of the anti-secular conclave of clerics. I know. Am I expected to kneel? Silence, you impudent punk! This is my assistant, Cobb. Charmed, I'm sure. And you require no introduction. Your cloak and staff betray your origins. But I must say I'm surprised to find you here. It's been quite a long time since any weaver bothered to leave that dreary little rock you call home. <laughs> Doom. <laughs> So provincial. I can't help but wonder what impelled you to leave it now. His Excellency asked you a question. I know. I'm ignoring it. Ah, recalcitrance. I see. Shall I fetch the uh, instruments of persuasion, Master? Please forgive my assistant his eagerness. I fear Cobb is not very worldly. He does not understand the dangerous power of a weaver. Dangerous? Your reverence, him? Quite dangerous indeed, my dear Cobb. In fact, he could burst this flimsy iron cage open with hardly a second thought. That's impossible, most exalted one. I inspect the locks personally every fortnight. Observe and learn then, for even now your prisoner plans his escape. It might help to point at something first. You see, Cobb? An elusive breed, these weavers. Fortunately, however, they are quite helpless without their weaving sticks. That distaff will never work for you. Oh no, my young friend, you're quite wrong about that. Come, let me show you why. Consider the common graveyard. There, the boundary between the living and the dead is indistinct. Every graveyard like that, so? Now, Imagine what might happen if this delicate boundary were to be somehow breached. Torn open, so to speak. It's not that simple. You can't just rip the pattern apart like an old rag. But it is that simple, my boy, and I can. I have only to lift this rod, and the legions of the dead will stream forth onto the plain of the living. A vast army of the dead, nourished by the shepherd's flocks, armed by the artisanship of the blacksmiths, guided by the glassmaker's sphere. All under the spiritual leadership of one supreme commander, me! The final hour is now at hand. The age of the clerics is upon us! I have preparations to attend to, Cobb. Don't let this boy out of your sight. He is to touch nothing. Do you understand me? <laughs> Perfectly, Your Excellence. Lord Mandible, ruler of the universe. Mm, I do like the sound of it. I'll have to change my station. You're not so dangerous now, then, are you? She looks hungry. I think I'll stay out of her way. Keep away from that! His Eminence said not to touch anything! I wasn't gonna touch it. Just looking, Cobb. That's all. Just looking, eh? Well then, perhaps we can do a bit of a trade. How about I let you look in the sphere if... If... what? Well, the legends say that to gaze upon an uncloaked weaver brings death. Naturally, we clerics aren't given to such silly superstitions. But I'm curious. Let's answer this one once and for all, shall we? No!
May we have some quiet, please? I can't even begin to invoke the dead with all that screaming. Well, he can't say he wasn't warned. I see Cobb has been lax in his duty. No matter. You're just in time to witness the dawn of a new era. You don't have the slightest idea of what you're doing. The pattern is already worn and frayed. If you rip a hole in it now, the consequences will be beyond anything you can imagine. Spare me your weaver mysticism, boy. The time has come when the dead shall no longer envy the living. You've torn the pattern completely open. And with it, the eyes of the dead. Behold! I have a very bad feeling about this. Who dares disturb the peace of those who sleep? I welcome and greet you, noble spirit. I am Bishop Mandible. Transultimate Apostle of the Anti-Secular Conclave of Clerics. And whom have I the honor of summoning? I don't think I want to be part of this conversation. No one obeyed any summoning of yours, foolish mortal. I have summoned you. I am Chaos. You have merely opened the door, and I have passed through it. For this, you shall be rewarded. Join me now, as my slave. I see it has been much too long since my last visit. I can't seem to hold on to this thing. Stop! Welcome, Bobbin. You have joined us here at last. Where am I? You are outside the pattern, the home of the dead, and of those transcended. The shore of wonder? Yes, Bobbin, the shore of wonder. And you are the first to behold it with mortal eyes.
Rusty? Is that you? You don't look at all well. I'm not well. Actually, I'm dead. I don't... I don't know what to say. You don't have to say a thing. What do I matter? I'm just another one of the dead. Oh, Rusty, I feel terrible. I and didn't that's know... that's not even the end of it. I go outside to wait for doomsday, like a good little ghost see. But no sooner do I get settled again, but some stupid idiot shreds the universe apart and hauls us all back inside. There are a lot of very unhappy dead wandering around here. Let me tell you. I know. I was there when it happened. I might have known this was all your fault. No! No, it wasn't me. The bishop managed this one all on his own. Yeah? Well, there's going to be hell to pay, literally. There's talk among the dead that they're going to take over the world. Starting with the forge. My home. Where we used to build strong things. Good things. I need to choose my drafts more carefully. You did it! You brought me back! It is what you wanted, isn't it? Believe me, being alive is a lot more fun than being dead. But how did you do it? Well, healing your body was easy. You're alive because the pattern is torn and your soul was free to return to this side. Well, I must go, Bobbin. I've got to know what happened to the rest of my guild. And I must do the same. Good luck, Rusty. And be careful. Good fortune to you too, my friend. You are too late, wizard. The dead have increased their numbers here. Those not dead are suffering, and my songs were again useless. All that's left for us is to put an end to their misery. Come, and extend your help if you can. Please, what became of us? I was just walking among legions of dead. You were saved by the mercy of yonder boy. We have not had the chance to thank you properly, wizard. But our memories are long, and we will not forget you soon. Hail and farewell. Come along now, before the dead ones return to the harvest. Master Goodmold. Ah, the Weaver Boy. At least you have escaped the terror of the Dead Wall. It appears the Crystal Guard has not been so fortunate. But I don't understand. Why did you not use the Great Scythe? We never doubted the Scythe could save us. No, never, no indeed. <laughs> Even chaos must fall under its blade. But we could not do it. To unleash such merciless evil would show us to be no better than our enemies. The entire world would have feared us when it was done. And to have become so much like our enemy was unthinkable. <laughs> Just unthinkable. And so you didn't use it? We knew the price. The best we could hope for was to defend it bravely. 
But we are not warriors. You mean chaos stole the scythe? We did what we could, but it was not enough. Remember us, my young friend. Tell the world that we fought with courage and chose death with clarity. Above all else, clarity. Get your distaff ready. You must unmake the loom now before chaos takes control. What? How? I don't know what draft to use. <laughs> Birds and children have no business wielding such power. Weavers are the only ones who do have the right to use this power. Destiny has blessed you, young Threadbear. 
For you alone will live on to pass your guilt secrets to others more worthy of them. I invite you to serve my new empire as advisor. Me? You? Advisor? Of course. I will expect your full cooperation in this historic exchange of goodwill. After all, anything else may bring harm to our relationship. Don't listen to her, Bobbin. Heed me now. Here are the threads that will unmake the loom. Silence. Mitchell, say something, please. I need that draft. Enough! I lose patience in the presence of inferior beings. You will now instruct me in the use of this fascinating instrument. Over my dead body. Preference note. I advise you not to... Throw away that stick, young fool! Your weaver magic can't begin to touch me! Now, Bobbin, quickly, the threads you need are... Ducks are meant to be eaten, not heard. Now, I believe we were discussing the secrets of the loom. your eyes now, Bobbin, but keep your ears open. Here descends the third shadow. That bird has annoyed me once too often. Now, my esteemed advisor, where were we before we were so rudely distracted? Hetchel's black feather. She left one behind. And so she did. I think I shall keep it as a souvenir of our little encounter. I want that feather. Give it to me. My, my. Impudent, aren't we?
Bobbin! Bobbin, you did it! The loom is unmade! You ignorant fools! Do you comprehend what you have done? None of us can pass across this rift your weaver mischief has so blindly created! Your pious meddling has brought the end of my dream! You will hear for all eternity the cries of those you have abandoned, Bobbin Threadbear! You will always know that you have left them under my roof. We abandon no one. When our side of the pattern is mended, we will return and put an end to your evil. Come, Loon Child. It is time for us to begin our destinies anew. Leaving so soon, Weaver? I was looking forward to spending more time with you. Let's go.